Lokmar getting this wisdom. Uh, I like to know the, the process of acquiring wisdom. Is it something that comes from God or can we do something to acquire? Is it kasvi or not? Yes. Now the question is, Lokman salam, who was given the wisdom, is this something that one can do to obtain or no, it's Allah's gift? The answer is, yes, Luqman, what he got was Kasbi. He didn't have it before, and now he has it. So it means it's something that he obtained later. As a matter of fact, one time somebody asked Luqman, because Luqman he used to be a shepherd. A man saw him and he said, you were a shepherd last night, remember? And now we were talking wisdom, wisdom, what did you get it? <laughs> but that's what people, you know, and somebody, with you yesterday and they were normal and today they turn to be something like, how did it happen? And it happened also in the Quran, Prophet Musa alayhi salam, when he went back to Pharaoh, Pharaoh said to him, you were here yesterday. Alam takun fina wa ala, he said, alam nurabbika fina wa lida wa kunta fina wa fa'alta fa'alta kallati fa'alta wa kunta bina dhalim. He said, remember you were here, you were playing, we raised you. Now you come back and tell me, I'm a messenger from Allah. I'm a Allah sent me. So where did that come from? Right? So Luqman was asked the same question and he said, yes, I was a shepherd yesterday. I was like a normal person yesterday, but today Allah has given me this wisdom. And then he asked him, what did you do to get that? And he mentioned, like we said, this wisdom anybody can obtain. Because one thing we have to understand, Allah doesn't give this just randomly. No. You have to do something for Allah to give you something. And Allah mentioned in the Quran, You have to give something. If you don't give something, you have to pass the test. وَإِذِ ابْتَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ فَأَتَمَّهُنْ قَالَ إِنِّي You have to do something for Allah to give you. Now, Luqman as we mentioned, some of the things he did, according to what they asked him, is one of the things that I used to do, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me this wisdom, one of them is, I used to think a lot. At-tafakkur. That is one. Number two, it says, I used to not to interfere into things that have nothing to do with me. You know, most of us, is the opposite. Things that we're supposed to do something about it, we say it's none of my business. Things that are not my business, that is what I want to gossip about. <laughs> right? Now somebody's life, now I want to hear, I want to talk much about their personal, their personal life. Somebody's doing haram, where I supposed to do, I'm gonna, no, it's none of my business. Look, one of said, no, what I used to do, I don't interfere in anything that has nothing to do with me. That is number two. Number three, he said, I used to be quiet so much. That is number three. Number four, he said, I used to sit with the Ahl al -ilm a lot. He says, number four, he said, anytime I hear something good, he said, I always write it and I ask where is it from and who said it. I always write it. Which is one of the things also they said, a person, Talib al -ilm, should always keep a pen and paper. One saying they said, ma hufida far wa ma kutiba qar. Whatever you memorize can be forgotten, but what you write is always tasty. Luqman always goes with paper and paper. And he always, when he hears something, he writes it down. And the most important part, Luqman was a servant of Allah who doesn't commit sins. Because you know, one of the biggest obstacles between us and Allah's gift is the sin. And the most important also is, Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. Actually, of course, may Allah bless you with that. No doubt this is a sign of a joy for the same and the enemy as we are learning about these issues. Now I'm going to pass it on to others. One of the things that, of course, the Quran says about how are you going to become what Allah wants you to be? It says that Allah, as you mentioned, give it Allah continuously, as you probably know, 
خوف میدم جلیل و عمل و تنظیر و قضا و قلیل و استداد به یعنی رحیب If you have this five four categories which are my analysis then okay that that tagwa will lead you to something You probably have read There is a man, there was a man that his name is Kabbalah Kazem Right? Kabbalah right? Kazem, in one night suddenly he became Allah man Why? Because he was a father And he didn't have any uh, sin on his life according to what his son is saying. His son is still, still alive actually. We talk, we talk about this. He's from the Iraq area of Iran. <clears throat> so due to that, as I told you, Makarim Shirazi says, if you look at his face, you would see him like he probably didn't know how to read his Surah al Fatiha. That is what he became unknown. Why? Because he speak to the law. He didn't do any sin. And he was continuously following his nawaf and his salat, the way that he says this. So, inshallah, Allah has first two verses, and I have a mention of the Lord of good places. I had a question now. He said that there was uh, ten commandments that the uh, good man gave to his son. Yes. Uh, can you name the ten? The more than ten? <laughs> it's in the Zura, when you go to the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See, the commandments that he talk about. <coughs> Inshallah, maybe when you get a chance, I'll explain that. See, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started with his words, then Allah injected his own words too. Which they say that is one of the blessings that Allah has given to him, that Allah makes his word with the word of his son. In one eye. Mainly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't do that. But Luqman, because he was great man, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did that. One of the things that Allah mentioned and said that Luqman alayhi salam was telling his son, he said, Ya Bunaya Aqim as Salat. Establish prayer. One ha anil wa amur bil ma'aruf. One ha anil munkar. Wasbir ala ma asabak. In the valley come in Azmil Umur. Wala to sa er haddaka finat. Wala to sa er haddaka linas. Wala tamshif al ardi marha. In the kalan tahrik al arda walan tablu al jibala tula. This are the ten commandments that he talk. And then he mentioned, he said, Wala. It says, وَغْضُدْ مِنْ صَوْتِكْ إِنَّ أَنْكَرَ الْأَنْسْوَاتِ لَسَوْتِ الْحَمِيرِ He talks about practical lifestyle that a person is supposed to have. You know, from Tawheed to a personal life, how to live as a normal servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What to say and how to say it. And then he talks about how to even walk on the earth and why you shouldn't walk in certain way and why you should walk in certain way. All this Nuhman alayhi salam mentioned. And, uh, and he talks about, see, if I want to put it in, in two words, he talks about usul al din and then he talks about furu' al din and then he talks about akhlaq. The three main things that he talks about. Usul al din furu' al din and then akhlaq. These are the commandments that he talks about. Yes. Um, um, uh, just a simple question. Um, is there a similar... Uh, description and, and the and the mother of, of, of someone like uh, Luqman al Islam for Ali ibn Abi Talib. I mean, his hikmah also is, is there some mention of that, like very explicitly, like, like Surah Luqman is in the, in the Quran where one can derive that this is for Ali ibn Abi Talib? If you look at the, the contribution of Ali ibn Abi Talib, that's I mean, it to me it seems like. Phenomenal, right? I mean, it's Allah's hikmah is obviously with him as well. But I was just trying to see if there's any sort of a comparison or or, or analysis somewhere. No doubt. The question is: Is there any place in the Quran where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala spoke about the wisdoms of Imam Ali al-Mu'minin, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or there is none? The answer is yes, of course. There is so many of them. And there is anywhere you see Allah spoke about the wisdom of Rasulullah is the same wisdom of Imam Ali Ali Islam. Anywhere Allah ever spoke about wisdom of Rasul or his hikmah is the same as the wisdom of Imam Ali Ali Islam. The nas of the Quran where Allah said in Surah Ali Imran, it says, فَقُلْ تَعَالَوْ نَدْعُ أَبْنَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ 
So anything the Prophet says is the same like Imam Ali alayhi salam. So every wisdom that the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala quoted him in the Quran is the same as Imam Ali alayhi salam. That is one. And number two, Imam Ali's wisdom is in Najib Balaam, which I have no doubt that Luqman alayhi salam will be a student of Imam Amir al Mu'min when it comes to that wisdom. Why? Because when you go with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, he mentioned, Ya Ali, everything that I said, I said, you know it. And everything I see, you see it too. The difference is that, he says, that whatever I say, you can say it too, Ali. Whatever I hear, you hear. Whatever I see, you see it. The difference is that I'm a messenger and you're not a messenger. That's the difference. So every wisdom that Rasulullah has, Imam Ali has it too. Yes. If, if, I, if you take it to the next level, how about Hadrat Abdul Talib? Yes. That, that conversation of father and son, is there a similarity somewhere with Luqman and his son? The question is, there is, is there any similarity between Imam Ali السلام, and Abu Talib's father as the Quran mentioned about Luqman and his son? The answer is yes, there are some similarities. The one of the similarities is that Imam Abu Talib, when you go to the history, they says he was the first one to tell Imam Ali السلام, sit with the Muhammad and learn from him. Because whatever he brought is the same as what the Isa السلام, brought. And you can find this in Diwan, a book called Diwan Abu Talib. The one that he wrote about the Prophet and he put it in the form of poems. But all is about Tawheed, about believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So yes, we have similarity about that as well. Yes. Last question. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I've got a question about the dispute. What a question about the dispute that Prophet Muhammad is. Better? Yeah. For a question, like, it's, you're saying he's disputing that Prophet Muhammad or Luqman was Prophet. Luqman was Prophet. Now, if the Quran does not explicitly say he's a Prophet, and Imam Sadr is Islam said he's not a Prophet, so why should there be any dispute? Now, the question is, I don't know if I need to repeat the question, that if Quran didn't mention that he's a prophet, then why should they be dispute about him being a prophet or not? The reason why there is a dispute, because there are some narrations, some ahadith, which indicate that he might be a prophet. That is one. And it's not just him. When you go to Khidr, there's a dispute about Khidr too. Some say he was a prophet, some say he wasn't a prophet. But Quran never made a declaration that he was a prophet or not. So in that sense, there are some people, when they found some, some ulama, they found some hadith that indicate that he is a prophet. Depending looking at the environment and the wisdom that he had and what he has done, or what he did, they said it looks like he was, he, he was a prophet. But, but my reasoning was if Imam Sadiq said he's not a prophet, then why should there be a dispute? Yes, that is one of the narrations okay. that Imam said that. Other Maharaja, or they have some ahadith also, which they think another Imam said he was a prophet. Right? Like Allah Tabatwa Rahmatullah Ta'ala Alay, he said he was a prophet, you know, who was sent to Africa. And he lived his life, and he taught people, and he guided people, and he has some reasoning too. But some other scholars, they know he wasn't for some of the reasons that they also have. But what is matter is whether he's a prophet or not a prophet, I really don't think it was matter. That's matter. What matters is the message we can learn from them. That is what is more important. Yes.